carburetors are ancient and EFI always works, right? Well, not quite so fast here. Today I'm gonna to talk about the differences between a carburetor setup and EFI setup and uh, help you make the decision on what's right for you. Let's go. Obviously we've done a lot of carburetor videos on this channel and really haven't done anything on the EFI side. That's about to change. Right now I'm shooting this video in mid-September, but SEMA's right around the corner. Matter of fact, the next set of videos that you should see after this one comes out is all the stuff that I shoot at SEMA. And I know that there is a major brand coming out with another EFI setup. So where does that leave us today? Well, we still have carbureted stuff on the truck, and for the time being it's going to be that way. But we will be doing a EFI system. Now, what I don't know is what type we're going to use. The Edelbrock ProFlow 4 setup has been around for quite a while. It is a port style EFI, which I tend to like quite a bit more than just the regular old standard throttle body EFI stuff that uh, the really cheap guys go out and, and uh, put, put on the market. But those differences aside, we really need to talk about quite a bit of differences between what carbureted setups look like and EFI setup looks like and what is the best decision for what you're trying to get out of the application. It seems like every time we talk about a carbureted setup, uh, tuning specifically, cam profiles, it all boils down to application. What are you trying to get out of the engine and what are you asking it to provide you? Certainly an EFI setup is no different. If you're going or you want to run a carbureted application, great, then you kind of already have that part of it set. And then it's just a matter of determining how all things work together. Are you gonna run a big solid roller? Are you gonna run a flat tappet? Uh, what is your application look like as far as mileage and drivability? And are you trying to drag race it? Whatever the case may be. A lot of questions to answer here and certainly deciding on how you're gonna deliver the fuel is a big part of that. And that's certainly why the, a big reason why people decide to run an EFI setup because they think it's gonna eliminate all those problems. When in reality, well, there's some problems that uh, come along with running an EFI, same with running a carburetor. We talk about some setup things, but also talk about some myths I think that we kinda need to address a little bit because it doesn't make sense of uh, some of the objections that some people have. The biggest single myth that I see with a EFI setup is people always say, I don't want to run it because it's got, you have to run an electric fuel pump and if I get uh, the pump dies or it goes bad or whatever, then I'm stuck on the side of the road and then I'm screwed. Well, you're just as screwed with a mechanical pump. You don't keep one of those in your back pocket, do you? The reality is if you look at what's on the road today, every modern vehicle has the pump in the tank. Almost every single one of them. They're all electric pumps. They last for hundreds of thousands of miles you're not going to destroy that thing. If that's your concern, then don't buy a really cheap pump. Step up into a really high quality pump. This happens to be a brushless pump by Dietchworks. It is probably one of the best, highest volume pumps that are on the market, but it is a great example of a EFI pump that these EFI systems need to use, and you will not destroy that thing. You will get a good long service life out of it. Your mechanical pump is going to fail before that one does. Fuel system setup and ignition setup are obviously very, very different, but they're also just as critical on a carburetor setup as it is on an EFI. EFI setup, ignition is controlled by the computer. Um, on a, a carburetor setup, you could have a uh, like an MSD grid or something like that, or something simple like just a spark box that controls a little bit of the timing, uh, or you can just run an old uh, style points or mechanical <laughs> type d distributor with, you know, like an HEI or something like that. It's really based on the application and what you want to run with it. But understanding that things get much more complex when you're talking about running an EFI setup, and I think that's what scares people off the most is, just the amount of complexity that's involved with this type of setup versus a carburetor setup. Fuel system, ignition, and wiring are the, really the three things that you need to be understanding of before you decide to make uh, the move on an EFI setup. Now, another big myth that I see all over the place is, well, I can make uh, more horsepower with an EFI setup, or I can make more horsepower with a carburetor setup. Certainly, if you're going to talk about just strictly power numbers, 
and that's it. You're not going to work with anything else. It really all depends on what you're using it for. I hate to keep beating that horse, but um, application, application, application. It's going to dictate every choice that you make. And in this case, if you're trying to, oh, I don't know, do a drag and drive car and oh, it, you're a, a big single turbo or a twin turbo or a, a big pro charger, supercharger on it, you may want to run a carburetor or you may want to run an EFI. The EFI gives you a little bit quicker, easier tuning side of it because on the side of the road, pop open the laptop, connect to the, the ECU for the system, change the tuning table uh, for fuel and spark, and you're done. Um, carburetor is a little bit more complicated. The data logging is a little bit more difficult on that, obviously. Love to see somebody come out with a, uh, a carbureted data logging system that helps uh, a tuner or a user uh, figure out all those things a little bit quicker on the fly. The trouble is uh, so much easier to, to change tables in an EFI setup than it is to uh, start playing around with uh, circuits on a carburetor because it takes a little bit more than just uh, uh, information that you're getting out of the data logger. Price is another really big one here. Obviously, if you're just going to, you have nothing, you don't have an intake manifold ignition carburetor, you don't have an EFI set up, nothing. Really, at the end of the day, if you look at it, the EFI system is always going to be more money just simply because of the other, the components that you're using within that. The fuel system is much more expensive uh, on an EFI setup. So if you're looking to save money, and depending on what the other pieces are to what you're trying to fit together in the application, the carburetor side's probably always gonna be the cheaper of the two. Another myth I see very frequently is, well, carburetors can't um, change with altitude. An EFI system will do that if I'm driving from Santa Fe, New Mexico at 7,000 feet down to El Paso, Texas at 1,000 feet or whatever it is. Yeah, that's accurate, but it's not like that carburetor can't be adjusted and tuned. Uh, and realistically, that doesn't happen very often. I guess if you were in a drag and drive event or if you were on a power tour type of deal where, uh, you know, you were changing drastic elevation. Yeah, certainly at higher elevations, you're going to need to lean, lean things out a little bit uh, and add a little bit more timing. The uh, uh, EFI setup is a little bit more capable of handling that because uh, certainly you can change all that to uh, uh, keep it within the uh, the boundaries that you set uh, within the table when you're talking about uh, fuel and 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 how much timing you're going to put into it. Carbureted side's a little bit more complicated because you're going to have to do all those things manually. Another thing that I see very frequently is carburetors are harder to tune. Uh, I don't disagree with that, and I hate to say that, but even with the amount of content that I have on my channel, the amount of people that say, I put on X carburetor on Y application, and I just bolted it on right out of the box, it seems to be perfect. No, you're tolerating what it's giving you. You're not tuning for the application. So yes, it does make a little bit more complicated, but good tuning tools like an AFR, like a vacuum gauge, certainly will help you make those decisions when you're tuning a carburetor. And if you've got some very basic understanding, or if you follow some good YouTube channels that have that type of content, so are carburetors harder to tune? Not really. I think people just give up on them and expect that they're gonna do it. On these type of EFI setups, there's typically a self-learning uh, mode that these go into. Uh, the Edelbrock uh, ProFlow uh, 4 EFI system is only self-learning. Uh, there is another module that you can buy that you can do some tuning with it, but uh, uh, then you're getting into the fast side of things on the Edelbrock side, the Holly on the Terminator side, where you can do more aggressive tuning if you're a little bit higher horsepower application, boosted, whatever. Another comment I see quite frequently is, well, carburetors don't start that well on a cold start, depending on the temperature, obviously, and certainly on a race-style carburetor where you have no choke, uh, certainly makes that different, and EFI is always better. I don't disagree with that. That's probably a, a fairly accurate one. The sensors help adjust that cold start fueling so you're not overly rich, uh, allows it to idle very smoothly. It's pretty seamless, actually, when you're talking about how things work on a uh, uh, EFI setup from uh, idle AFR at cold and idle AFR when it's hot. That does not mean that you cannot get a carbureted setup to 
have a really good set of street manners, but that means you have to choose the equipment that goes along with it. Now, obviously with everything, I always talk about ignition timing being one of the most critical things, and it certainly is on both setups, EFI or carbureted, doesn't matter. Good ignition timing certainly helps those things out. Having the right fuel system set up on a carburetor is absolutely critical. I've talked about this thousands of times, it seems like. Doesn't matter what pump you're running, always, 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 always run a pressure regulator. Why? If nothing else, it just gives you another adjustment point where you can control how much pressure the carburetor is seeing. Another comment that I see very frequently is, well, uh, aftermarket EFI setups are not dependable. They fail all the time. Yes, you are accurate in that assessment. But it is also because you've chosen the cheapest pile of garbage that is on the market. And when you buy a $500 throttle body EFI setup, you're going to get $500 problems. There's a reason why the, uh, the ProFlow Edelbrock is so much money. They use good quality injectors. They use high quality sensors made by Bosch. They're not knockoff uh, sensors that uh, they try to cheapen out on. They spent a lot of money to make sure that they've got a good throttle position sensor, mass airflow sensor, all of those things that need to be in there. They're not the cheapest piece of junk that you can buy. But if you buy those things, yes, your chances of having a failure are much higher. So yes, take into account that an EFI system is more money, but when you buy the cheapest pizza garbage that's out there, expect to have problems and don't blame the EFI, blame yourself. All that being said, we've done a lot of carburetor content, obviously on this channel for the last five years. Uh, but when uh, we get to SEMA, I will shoot a separate video uh, on the new EFI setup that I know is coming out. We'll talk about it a little bit and then I'm probably going to run that on the truck. Don't know how long it'll be on there. It may only be on there for a few weeks or a few months. I want to run through a few things with you uh, to show you some things when sensors go bad, what to look for, uh, certainly part number compatibility uh, with stuff that you can buy off the shelf is a big one. But again, that's based on buying a quality brand name product and not racing to the bottom to buy the cheapest piece of garbage you can get your hands on. There's plenty of those on the marketplace. I'm not going to name them. You know exactly who I'm talking about. They're, they're out there. But again, you, you get what you pay for. And in this case, yeah, if you don't pay for it, well, you're going to get the results that you're going to get. But we're going to run an EFI setup on the truck. But a little bit different style of configuration. But I'll show you the easiest way to run that and uh, eager to do that. Probably be early next year when we do that, um, depending on uh, what the availability is on that uh, new EFI setup. setup. But uh, I'll do a separate short video on that when we get to SEMA next week. So you'll see all that. Uh, but the ProFlow 4 is uh, certainly one that uh, we could run. And uh, I may run. I don't know. But uh, we'll see what happens with it, depending on the availability. So when it comes to this deciding on what system you want to run, obviously the last big thing that I would say is what are you comfortable with? Are you comfortable with a carburetor? Have you run one for 20, 30, 40, well, almost 50 years of your life and uh, you're enjoying it? Then sure, uh, stick with it if that's what you want to do, depending on what goals you have for it. If you're a little more ambitious and you're not afraid of the wiring side of things, you're not afraid of buying and spending the money on a good setup, then maybe EFI is better for you. Mechanical, simple, proven, certainly more complex, smarter, uh, but there's more parts that can fail and uh, potential problems if you don't uh, step up and buy the good stuff right from the get-go. hope that addresses a few of the things that... Uh, um, the questions that you had. Again, I get it all the time. I'm not opposed to the EFI setups. I've installed quite a few of these. Uh, most commonly is uh, uh, the ProFlow 4 by Edelbrock. Uh, the Fast Easy EFI, I've done, well, several of those. Uh, the Fast XFI and a handful of Holly units. Uh, I don't have any uh, issue with any of those. Uh, if they start to cheapen out and change the quality of the uh, uh, the supporting pieces in there, injector sensors, whatever, then yeah, it becomes a problem. But uh, typically those companies are fairly decent. And uh, if 
stick with a name brand, uh, you're certainly going to pay a little bit more, but you get, get what you pay for. Certainly the same thing comes with a carburetor as well. You can buy a Chinese knockoff on Amazon for, you know, a hundred bucks or 150 bucks or 200 bucks, whatever they are. Uh, I don't know, but we've done enough videos on there that hopefully you're not, uh, uh, ignorant enough to do that. Um, ignorance, not a bad word, just means you don't understand. You're not educated. Uh, stupid means you're willfully going out and buying that because you don't care what the, <laughs> what the results are. Uh, you're going to just buy it anyway. So, uh, anyway, if you've got any questions on this, or if you have any questions on a setup that you're looking at, which one you think would be better, uh, and you want to discuss it, leave a comment down below. Happy to talk about that. Not opposed to any of the EFI setups out there. Again, we will have one on the GMC truck fairly soon. When it comes to the Chevelle, I don't know, to be very honest with you. I believe I'm going to start carbureted, and it'll probably stay carbureted on that big block. If I go back to an LS in that car, more than likely it'll be to a, uh, uh, a standalone EFI setup uh, uh, Holly Terminator is probably the top of that list right now, uh, but just because Holly owns that market, they do extremely well with it. It's a very good quality part. Uh, the software is easily easy, easy tunable, uh, and I know those tables fairly well. Been through them enough time. Again, leave your comments down below. Appreciate it, and uh, yeah, we'll catch you from SEMA next week. We'll talk to you then.